Okay, good evening everyone. I wasn't going to speak tonight um, because I wasn't sure if I'd be here and I actually had spoken to Bill about not hosting this event anymore and uh, we've, we've done it for about eight years and I really enjoy doing it but I just simply haven't had the time this year to get involved and so I really appreciate Bill still wanting me to be involved and I appreciate some of the last minute papers that we've given Francesca stepped in for me literally only three or four days ago when I sent a begging email for someone to fill my slot. So thank you, Francesca. Um, yeah, Despina has come along uh, at, at my request. We are very privileged to be working with Despina on, I think, three projects at the moment. And it's quite uh, yeah, rewarding for us to be involved with someone with so much passion. Dan, well, fantastic Dan. You know, and he's a great young guy. As some of you may remember previous presentations we had here about engaging with young people. Thank God we've engaged with Dan. Um, I noticed on his uh, uh, slideshow about himself, he didn't mention his father. Right? And we have his father to thank for being him here tonight. So Mark is a good friend of mine, a good colleague to all of uh, uh, our, um, uh, our companies. And, uh, and Mark, well done for bringing Dan along and, uh, and really motivational, I thought it was brilliant. Um, but the last slide I think was all about Dan as well, about measurement and checking and, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and so, so good influence from Mark. Um, so I didn't really know what to speak about tonight because uh, there's so much going on for me and for Spirit and for Lincoln Lake at the moment. And, and so I was asked to give a little bit of an update on what we're doing with Romania because I can't believe it was a year ago when I said that we were buying a factory and it's taken a year to get through the paperwork of, of actually buying the factory. And I've never worked so hard in my life. It is incredibly difficult to enter the Romanian market. Um, we have a few of our Romanian staff here tonight. Dennis is here at the front and Alina and Christian are here somewhere. Um, and I'm going to show you some slides of some of the people that have been working with us for this last five or six months. I'm also going to mention um, <laughs> that horrible word, Brexit, because that's kind of stopped us in our tracks a little bit. Um, and I am really pleased that uh, um, we've got Romania now to, to, um, to work with because your Brexit has done a lot of damage to the UK, in my opinion, and it's done a lot of damage to our industry. And I'm not going to get on my soapbox about it, but it was a horrible day on the 23rd of. Um, of July, of June, sorry, and um, it, it was quite weird because at 10.30, 11 o'clock, I was talking with Lee and it all looked like it was going to be fine and we went to bed. And then at 20 past four, Lee Lloyd was texting me, uh, you need to wake up and look at the TV, and uh, it was really horrible news. And uh, yeah, for me, it, it's old news now, but we're all, we're all stuck with the problem. And nobody really knows what's going to happen now, and I think we, we just have to get on with it and make the best of what's happened. But everyone in this room is affected by Brexit, except for perhaps Dan, who's you know, life's in a bubble and he's really enjoying life and advising us <laughs> how, to, how to get on with uh, uh, our manufacturing. But whether you're an importer or an exporter, it's going to affect you because if you're uh, um, manufacturing PCB, the materials are coming from uh, you know, uh, Asia and we're buying in dollars and the exchange rate. So a mixed bag of fortunes and misfortunes. Everything we sell is worth more now in, in our export markets. Um, for us, it's only about 20, 25% of our sales. Um, but everything that we're importing has also gone up by 15%. Um, holidays are now more expensive, um, but UK tourism has had a, a, a benefit from it. Um, the whole Brexit vote was too much, in my opinion, about immigration, and I don't think any of us should be too concerned about that, in my opinion, and it's a taboo subject because I don't want to stop talking about it because I think we need the immigration. Um, inward investment and research is definitely going to be affected. We're not going to have the privilege of people like Despina in our country if we're not welcoming people from overseas. You know, Despina made it very clear to me about three or four months ago when we were having a chat and she wasn't here for the weather. Um, she was here for the great news. You know, she's come from Greece, it's beautiful, it's sunny, and uh, it's a nice place to live. But um, we have fantastic universities and fantastic uh, 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 opportunities for uh, researchers like Despina to come and work in this country. So uh, I do believe that in the future, if we're not going to be a welcoming nation, we're not going to get the benefits of the uh, people in our universities, and these projects will just sit and, uh, and, um, and stagnate. Um, but it's 
change rates really are the, the bad thing, in my opinion, that's come out of, out of Brexit that we're all suffering with. And you know, some of us here were fabricators and importers of all. Um, our business is about 60% uh, uh, import and retail, and the rest is manufacturing. But you know, today we're talking to people supplying laminate. Laminate from China is about to go up uh, in price um, because of demand on copper foils uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in, in China. And then on top of that, we've got to add the exchange rate difference. So you're probably looking at your 20% increase on laminate prices. That's the thing that we buy from, of course. Um, so this is the horrible story that we're all living with at the moment. You know, at the start of the year, we're all sitting quite comfortably at 146, 147, 148. And life's weekly OK. June 23rd, it tumbles, and it hasn't recovered. You know, we have days of excitement now. We watch this every day and every hour in our company. And we got excited when it hit 134 the other day, but it's back out to 130 again today. Um, so that's a, a, a sort of shorter view of it. There it was at 148 in, on June the 23rd, and then down 130 where we are today. And, and it's affecting us a lot in spirit. It's hurt our cash flow, it's hurt our profitability. It's uh, making my next project a little bit more difficult for me because we didn't plan for this. Nobody planned for this. And uh, um, so uh, yeah, there are a lot of things for us to do. Uh, now, it's a depressing thing that we're all dealing with, but you know, we have to get on with it. Get that. But what can we do? We can't do that. <laughs> That's Jake. He's not here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually an easier, Jake's doing business. So, uh, um, but what we could do is do this. Because look for Steve. <laughs> <laughs> So Steve sent his apologies and sent me this picture this morning. Uh, and, uh, he said, I'm not going to the ITC, I've got better things to do. Um, and that was this morning. Um, so I came up with this, keep calm and hunger down, because actually we just got to look after ourselves and um, take action. And we have had to do some things in spirit which aren't nice. We have had uh, um, some redundancies. We have had some changes in pay structures. And we're looking at all of the costs, cleaning contracts, cars, everything, because the exchange rate isn't going to recover and you can't get back what's already gone. So you know, everyone's got to change course and, and think differently about their business in this new world that we're living in. Um, and you might want to change your mind. And I certainly have. I've stood here up on my soapbox promoting Britain before, British manufacturing, and um, I'm going to promote Romania at the moment, but there is still a great place for British manufacturing and but, you know, there are costs for us uh, to absorb. Um, and you can change your mind about if you like as well. Um, these people, I used to love them. Yeah. <laughs> Cameron, yeah. Jeremy Clarkson, <laughs> Digby Jones, I was a huge fan of Digby Jones, but he was promoting exit. Well, Paris, we all know what happened there. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Boris, what a buffoon, absolute buffoon. And Pete Dobbs, that was because he just resigned. And, uh, <laughs> 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 he's not with me anymore. I did have a picture of the Queen there because she also annoyed me, but I couldn't put her on the same page as anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and bless her heart, the Queen, you know, that, uh, she should have supported us more, I think, before the, the Brexit vote. But um, yeah, so I've changed my mind and I've actually thrown away all the books I had for these people. Um, so now, Romania, and that's where my motivation is at the moment. We, we've put so much effort into Romania, and actually, my staff and the Romanian staff have put a lot of passion into a project that's taking a lot longer than I wanted it to. Um, it, it's not been easy. Um, we've got a building, and this is uh, our building, and we actually took ownership of it on the 1st of August. And uh, we, when we acquired it, it still had some tenants uh, that were renting some of the uh, um, back parts of the building. So that they went on the 1st of September. So we've effectively only had it three weeks. And we're... we're now, in this lovely building, it's only six years old, um, we're now cleaning it and preparing it for P2B fabrication and P2B production of just single-sided boards, of which we buy a lot of them in uh, Asia. Um, so I produced a drawing, which wasn't good enough for the authorities, and um, uh, that was for, that's actually version 16 of my drawing. Um, and then I had to pay somebody £8,000 to replicate exactly what I have, €8,000 to replicate exactly what I've got above. Um, one of the things I've learned in Romania, everything is about paying for something. And we seem to get over one hurdle and then we reach a 
another one, and we pay, and we wait, and we pay, and we wait. And, but one of the interesting things I discovered was, that's very different to England, is that we bought a factory. And that factory has authorization to be used for what it was built for, not for PCB. So now we have this lovely factory, and we're now waiting for authorization to use it for what we intend to use it for. Very different system to here. So to get authorization, the first thing you need to do is to use drawing. And that drawing has to include all of the equipment. The power consumption, the water consumption, the water usage, where you're going to put the waste, how much waste you're going to do. I have, my brain is fit. I have never had so much information extrapolated from me in such a short time. It, this project <coughs> has been intense. And if I did it again, I would do it all with new equipment because finding out all of the information that is needed for second-hand equipment has been a challenge. And, um, and it's still ongoing. Um, so this is our first truck arriving last week. Um, this is the equipment that we sent over. Um, and we are now actively starting to put our team together. So here I think are 16 people. Some of, them, some of you may have met these guys. Um, they all bar three of these. Um, and uh, which one was the red? The blue pointer? Oh, sorry. The one uh, I took a lesson from Francesca, sorry. One um, so, so I go back. Okay, so, so all of these, apart from a couple here, have all been working here in England for the last five or six months. We went to two houses, brought them in uh, for PCB training at Spirit and Linklet. My team have been fantastic in working with these people over. Very few of these knew each other before they came to England, and they lived together, slept together, probably. <laughs> and, um, uh, uh, and worked together for the last five or six months. So they've returned back to Romania now. They're not making PCB at this moment in time. They're cleaning the factory, preparing the factory, they're digging holes, laying concrete. Um, I'm so impressed with the attitude and the team spirit that we have um, already uh, um, you know, developing. And, and I've got a memory of the goldfish. Which one was it now? Yeah. So yes, yeah, so this is the first uh, 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 people we've employed. We, we plan to have 41 there by uh, January, and then 100 by uh, uh, next year. Um, so sorry, who's spotted Ronaldo? I'm giving you already. Um, because there's one guy there who I didn't know he employed. He's sitting here. Um, oh, that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There he is. Look. Cleaning time, these ladies have not mown one bit. They've gone back and cleaned up every corner of the factory and they're working so bloody hard. Um, the factory here is now being created. We've taken down walls that were there and putting up our own walls and departments. Another, another interesting thing for us as well, that we've taken 100 metres of partitioning from uh, the former Tetraplex and then to be able to use it, I had to find out what exactly it was. Uh, uh, what metal was used, what insulation materials were in there before we could even start putting it in the factory. Um, and this is the carpenter that we employed to do some uh, work for us. Um, he's not on with us, it didn't work out very well with him. Um, <laughs> so, uh, apparently, I can do a better job than him. Um, <laughs> probably me. Um, so, uh, these guys here now unloading the lorries. Uh, this is uh, Jason, our main guy. He went over for a week last week and created an action plan, an absolute star, he's on holiday at the moment, um, and uh, he's going back out for a month in October. Uh, so these are the things we're trying to do at the moment while we're waiting for our authorization to actually have the factory. Um, some of the partitioning going up, the, the rooms being prepared. Um, offices and receptions are all done now. Um, this, this is the, the new walls we have and uh, uh, the new area that we've created. Um, Authorizations. So this is probably my biggest stumbling block now. And um, so having bought the factory, we now have to get authorization to make PCB, to put our waste in a certain corner, a certain part of the yard, to have uh, our water uh, discharge, our water arrive, authorization for the electricity, and it's um, I'm not used to asking too many permissions. And uh, normally I have a premise that I work on is it's better to seek forgiveness than 
and ask permission. Um, apparently, that doesn't work in Romania. Um, so, I am being very much encouraged by my team to ask permission, uh, otherwise, get used to wearing handcuffs. Um, and we have a problem uh, that since the factory was built, somebody next door has decided to build a factory, and it's only two metres from ours. And because of that, now we're not allowed to use our factory. Um, so I'm now trying to get him shut down before we can use out. So, so again here, uh, authorizations here, on Saturday uh, we were preparing a 142 page document to send to the rest uh, as the first initial stage of authorizations. And in Romania and some of the guys here are a little bit young, they might not uh, have experienced this so much, but uh, Romanian authorities are obsessed with stamps. And you can't buy anything for that at and, uh, and every page has to be signed and stamped. And so on Saturday, we produced a 142 page document uh, detailing the machinery that we're going to be using and, and where it's going to go and the exact position in the factory. And so that went off. And we started at 6. We were working on late Friday, started at 6 on Saturday morning, and booked a courier to take it at 12 o'clock. And when it arrived, Ready, and uh, so we kept him waiting an hour and a half until eventually um, he was able to leave. Um, so today, another lorry arrived from uh, Chichester, and uh, so that's our third truck arriving. We have five more containers loaded, ready to go, and I'm hoping that we've got authorization and we can start unloading those in uh, October. Um, so that's really an update for us. We do plan to be in production December, pilot production and full production in January. That's where we are. It is exhausting. I remember about five or six years ago, one night having a drink with Andy Prince, he went to bed early, and I said, you know, tired is for winks, and he was about 55 at that time, and I'm now 55 and I'm bloody tired, and I never thought I'd say it. But it is absolutely tiring, and I can honestly say I've never worked so hard, it's, uh, but it's very, very rewarding as well. And um, the Romanian staff that we've employed have, have got a very uh, high degree of education and have grasped the PC manufacturing so quickly. So I'm actually looking forward to making our first haul. And uh, it's a, 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 a very, very good journey for us and uh, I think very good for European manufacturing. <laughs> okay, so thanks everybody for coming tonight and uh, yeah, thanks for the last minute efforts for everybody that supported the event. Thank you. I'm just going to use the microphone.